Today's video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming service Nebula when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. So recently we've looked at a couple boards from bigger gaming brands that for various reasons were a bit of a letdown. And I mentioned that Keychron is a brand you wanna keep an eye on, particularly if you like unique form factors, Mac OS compatibility, Bluetooth, wireless, and hot swap, which to me is becoming more and more of a must have top tier feature, especially if you're still trying to figure out what switches you like. So today I have their K8, which is their TKL wireless version, but they also have a 65 and a 75% layout that according to a recent Twitter poll are dominating in the enthusiast space right now. We're gonna look at the stock experience today and we'll do some basic mods to see if we can really level up the performance of this board. You ready? Let's go. So as I said, Keychron offers a ton of different configurations, features, and price points. What we have here today is the KA TKL wireless RGB version with the aluminum case. It's priced as shown at like 99 US, and that's not a bare bones, that's switches and caps included. For transparency, Keychron did send this unit out for review. As always, there was no other compensation involved. It doesn't affect anything I have to say about it, and they didn't get to hear or see any aspect of this review. It's also important for me to note today that I've had this in-house for about six months now, so it's entirely possible that they revised or corrected some of the opportunities that I'm going to point out. Right off the rip, the aluminum version here is less of a chassis and more of like a wraparound aluminum frame. It creates a tray-like situation on the top where the edges are sort of high profile, but the spacing in between the key groups are still recessed. The underside's pretty simple with dual height flip down feet and plastic. You attach cables at the top left corner of the board on the side, which is weird, but it is USB-C. The included cable is a right angle, which is nice, but if you're going to use a custom, you'll want to use a right angle adapter off that USB-C. I'll link a couple cheap options down in the description. You also have a couple switches here to toggle between Android slash PC and Mac OS, and you have a power toggle for cable, Bluetooth, and off. This power switch is somehow both mushy and stiff at the same time, doesn't really inspire confidence. Overall, it's a pretty clean aesthetic out of the box. The caps are OEM profile in their ABS. They don't capture fingerprints as bad as I thought they would, and that two-tone gray with the orange accent is a clean look. I feel like this works well in a lot of different setups. They do kind of have like a sticky, chalky feeling to them for a little bit until you break them in, sort of like the old tie house did. Inside the box, you'll find additional modifier keys to support either Mac or PC and a couple additional escape cap options. One being stock gray, if that like pop of orange isn't your thing. There's a cheap OEM cap puller and switch puller in there as well. They are shine through, which was pretty surprising. Not because they're ABS, mostly because the font is so minimal, clean, and small that the last thing I expected the legends to be was backlit. I will say the backlighting is not super bright here. I'm sure that's in an effort to save battery life, but it's worth pointing out. Of course, with the standard layout, you can replace these with any keycaps you like. And with TKL being a standard size, just about any keycap set you find, regardless of price, will work just fine. When you get into the more specialized layouts like 65 and 75%, you'll need to go with more specific and often higher priced keycap options. Just pointing out too that my right bracket key came with the top corner sheared completely off, which was super weird. Underneath those caps, this board came with Gateron Reds, but the big highlight here is that the board is hot swap. These are north facing for you shine through keycap fans out there, and they have five pin support so no clipping your precious switches. PCB is black as well, which I really like. The stabilizers here are plate mounted, unfortunately. They seem to be a cherry clone. You can see that they're lubed from the factory, but it's pretty inconsistent. What I mean is that there's a thin lube in the housing that's pretty sparse, and then like a dot of heavy grease on the wire. When you look at them from the underside, the wire looks like it's actually lubed pretty well with what appears to be dielectric grease. Being hot swap, these are easy to access and mod, which would be the bare minimum for these. At least a good clip and a lube, which I did opt to do here. If you want, you can replace these as well with options from Cherry, Duroc, or Novel Keys. On the top side of the PCB, they've included these colored zones that happen to make it really helpful if you're trying to position Band-Aid mods or stab pads. Overall, the out-of-the-box typing experience is probably not going to blow you away. The Bluetooth has actually been really reliable. It's fast, it's solid, the board connects to the PC really fast as well when you power it on. I have no issues with that at all. It just doesn't sound like a nice board, and the stem wobble is really apparent, so it doesn't really feel like a premium typing experience either. Add in some stable a rattle, some ping from the switches, and some case resonance, and you've got a recipe for a board that just doesn't sound great out of the box. The 
So keeping in mind that this is a complete board at $99, it's not a premium stock experience, but it's not priced as one either. I like what they're doing over at Keychron. It's really interesting times right now because we have many more affordable options entering the market. The only players that seem to be missing the mark completely are those big box gaming brands. That's actually a video I'd like to tackle, but those wide scope videos like that don't have a tendency to perform very well for me on YouTube. Luckily with the support of Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and non-fiction features, I can. And because YouTube tends to prefer content optimized a certain way, you can now find all my videos completely ad-free on Nebula, a streamy award-winning nominated video platform built by and for amazing independent content creators like the Low Spec Gamer, Ali Abdal, and YouTube's lawyer, The Legal Eagle. We're building Nebula because we want a place for creators to try out new content ideas and extended cuts that might not work well on YouTube, especially stuff that's too far outside our usual content stream to get picked up and recommended by the algorithm. Curiosity Stream loves independent creators and they wanted to partner up. So right now, if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash badseedtech, you'll not only get access to Curiosity Stream for 26% off or $14.79 per year, you'll also get access to Nebula totally free. With Curiosity Stream, you'll get access to thousands of documentaries like this series called Dream the Future, narrated by Sigourney Weaver that tackles everything from energy, farming, and even what music may sound like in the future. Plus, you'll be helping not just me, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where we can create content that goes a little deeper than should you buy the latest gaming keyboard. You shouldn't. Big thanks to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today and thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. So luckily the flexible nature of this board does allow for modding. So let's do exactly that. First thing is some new switches. These are the Everglide Aqua King V3 linears. These are really heavily lubed from the factory. And in my opinion, the stock linear to look for if you don't wanna go through the trouble of lubing your own switches. These do feel a little sluggish or over lubed at first, but you break these in for a while and they're great. Pretty top tier sound right out of the box as well. No ping, no spring crunch. They're higher pitched than like Ink Blacks or H1s. Not as high pitched as like a Tangi. I went with the lighter spring weight here as well. I really, really like these. Shout out to Prevail Kiko for these. They're about 67 bucks for a 90 pack or 50 bucks for a 70 pack that will cover your 60 or 65% builds. I did opt to both clip and lube these stabs. 205 grade zero on the housing and dielectric grease on the wire. And I did use stab pads as well. And we'll need to do something about the case interior because there's zero sound dampening material in there at all. And it's going to amplify all the sounds we don't like. You can attack this a few different ways with the cheapest and easiest way just being some packing foam. That works. I use sorbethane sometimes on these. It's like $25 a sheet though on Amazon. This time I opted to go with a simple silicone mod after I saw a daily setup text video on the board he did for MKBHD. I grabbed this off Amazon for like 16 bucks. You just level the board, you seal all the openings, mix and let it sit there for like an hour or so and you're good to go. After getting all the mix in here, it's pretty clear that I could have used about 50% more to avoid like that ice cube tray effect, but that would have driven the cost of the dampener well above the amount we'd have paid for sorbethane. I did opt to leave the battery in here so I wouldn't have to trim around it. It's a big boy too. It's like 4,000 milliamp hours, so battery life is never really an issue with this. They do list it at 15 hours with RGB off. Outside of a little leakage on the case, this worked like a charm, took about an hour and a half. The only thing I will caution you about using silicone with this board is that the aluminum case version is not really an aluminum case, like I said. So you're not gonna get the ping that normally comes with an aluminum case. It's essentially an all plastic tray mount. Using silicone will absorb the negative sound, but it also may absorb some of the sonic character from your switches that you like as well. Said a different way, if you have switches that you already really like the sound of and you've done the necessary mods to your stabilizers here, you may prefer to not have any sound dampening inside here. Acoustics is all about tuning the board to your preference. So this board transformed into a really decent board for around 185 bucks with the bulk of the upgrade cost being the switches. If that doesn't sound budget, given the recent release of the GMMK Pro, just remember that you're starting at $170 for a bare bones and then you're adding switches and caps 
on top of that. So a fully built out GMMK Pro can still get up there in price point. Here we have a Bluetooth wireless TKL with backlighting that feels, sounds, and looks great. You can take the same approach that we use today and apply it to any board in Keychron's lineup and come away with similar results. For me, I would go with the K6. They're wireless 65%. The only factor there being that it will require more specialized keycap sets. Keep in mind too that aluminum, full RGB, wireless, and hot swap all add to the cost of the base board itself before mod. So you technically could come in at a much lower price point. Like their newer C1, one TKL is hot swap. It's no wireless with a white backlight. You can get in for like 55 bucks. It's an easy recommend. I'm a fan of what Keychron is doing at the budget end of the spectrum. You could definitely go with cheaper switches than we use today. You could even go with the stock switches and do stabilizer mods and some noise dampening and still come away with a really solid budget board. As always, links down in the description for everything that we talked about today. Any questions, hit me in the comments. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, Stay up.